Last week we started talking about this book, Right Use of Will, which is by Sean de Rohan, or Sayan, depending on how you pronounce it. And uh, we talked about the misunder misunderstanding and the importance of owning the denials and the acceptance and forgiving the self, that so many times in our lives that we are created by the Creator in a free will universe, and even in our basic understanding as fundamental Christians or as Christians or with the philosophies that we grew up with, most of us have believed or understood the notion that this was a free will universe. But some of us have been caught in our obedience to that spirit and to spirit's will, and spirit's will is that it is a free will. So, so many times in our journey, we have gotten stuck in this, and last week we talked a lot about denying and all the aspects of ourselves that we have denied, and where true acceptance is really going to make a key to understanding everything going on within ourselves. Now, as I've married all these different talks the, the year, the theme this year was the kingdom of keys, and what keys can we find for us to help us unlock our divinity? Help us find another place, another avenue, another way to go inside and realize those spirit people that we are, the essence of God that we truly are. As we continue today, we're going to talk about habits and judgments. We're going to be talking about the release of emotions and sowing the seeds of love. Now, I'm probably going to be doing a little bit more reading than I normally do, but there's a lot of stuff in this book that I really wanted you guys to get. Words are vibration, and my words vibrate her words vibrate, everybody's words vibrate. So as we honor all the different authors and different people and the different things that people add to this world, sometimes I just want to give it to you the way they wrote it. So uh, as we start today, we start with habits. And habits appeal to memories of feeling good. Habits are a problem because they override the sensitive response of the body to a particular situation and instead impose a ritualized response of learned behavior the person has used in the past, whether the present calls for the same response or not. Response from habit prohibits that is attuned to that particular, it prohibits the response that's attuned to that particular situation. So as we go into habits more, we're going to realize that every single one of us has some kind of habit, and sometimes we think it's a good habit, sometimes we think it's a bad habit, and we'll get into that in a little bit with judgments. But this is really the most part that I'm going to read, so just breathe and bear, bear with the reading. Open your ears and open your hearts to listen to the way she talks about habits. All habits and appetites that man has had and enjoyed, for the most part, have been judged as harmful to spiritual development. Lists of things to avoid have often included alcohol, sugar, red meat, drugs, caffeine, marijuana, tobacco, sex, and extremes of any kind. The understanding is needed that the problem is not the substances themselves, but the habit patterns and the extremes often associated with these substances. The substances blah, 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 have thought to be causal, but it is the consciousness that is causal and nothing else. For example, eating meat, especially red meat, has long been thought to make men too dense to receive spiritual illumination, and yet it is not causal here. The desire to eat meat has accompanied the consciousness needing it. Nourishment must match the vibration of the consciousness taking it in. I'm going to repeat that sentence on purpose because there's so many different views of who should eat what and where and when. Nourishment must match the vibration of the consciousness taking it in. All habits drop away when the consciousness is released from the need for them. In not understanding what was causal here, many have tried to break out of habits, giving up meat, for example, by using discipline and control. This approach only causes the pattern of habit to change its form. The reason for the habit pattern needs to be found, then accepted and understood, not condemned and disciplined away. The will is meant to guide you in this, so that whatever is appropriate to any particular situation is what you feel like doing and also do. The undermining of free will on earth has been accompanied by another habit, the habit of looking outside of the self for answers. This habit has another aspect to it, that denying of your own will in favor of someone else's concept of what is best for you. This imbalance has opened the way for rules and generalized procedures because no one really knows what each and every moment calls for in someone else. Freeing of the will 
to do what it is meant to do is going to return to each person the sensitive and appropriate attunement to self and everything the self does. No amount of refining or improving standardized procedures, applied programs, rules, or regulations is ever going to come close to individualized fine-tuning of that free will. Free will has to offer. Habits are attempts to compensate for the loss of this attunement and with generalized and extreme rules and procedures. Okay, so there's a lot of words. Breathe. Let's talk about them now. Because so many of us are in a society, well, well we're all in a society with rules. We are in a society of rules governed by other people, and we've been disallowing our own will to tell us what our own path is. As we're walking this journey, and we're walking in empowerment, matter of, this is the chakra we're talking about, this is our empowerment center, this is a place where we have misunderstood willpower and thought it was something to discipline. If I want to quit sugar, I must discipline myself to quit sugar. And what this is saying is, do what your will does on purpose. Follow your own guidance. Your will is constantly telling you what it wants. And if I'm eating red meat and you're not, maybe the vibration that you have in your body doesn't require that nourishment. And as we all attain that higher consciousness, awaken ourselves more and more, raise our own vibration, we're going to release these habits as opposed to try to quit them. It's never a place of using discipline to try to stop something in our life. So many times in our life, this is where we have, well, run into our own brick walls because the habit is going to just keep coming up. Like it said here, it will just keep changing its form. So I may think I quit eating one thing or quit this thing that I thought was not good for me because it was an extreme, but somewhere along the line, my body's still going to talk to me. It's going to let me know that the vibrational change that needs to be made is going to happen and those things will fall away naturally. So as I continue to understand and work my own for right use of will and understand that these habits are just really creating emotional patterns in me. We talked about this in Handbook to Higher Consciousness, and all these points are marrying each other, that the emotion-backed addictions that we have had are really the things that are under, underlying what we do in this world. And if we can shift those to preferences instead of addictions, then we can move forward in our own consciousness. Habits are to the body what judgments are to the consciousness. Both have rigidity. Habitual behavior is a judgment that what was called for once is what is called for now, and therefore no change or growth has taken place. One of the most important things in our being is that we're constantly changing. And everything in this universe is constantly in a state of flux. We know this on a scientific level, we know this on a metaphysical level, we understand it in so many different ways, and yet we keep ourselves locked in habits. Sometimes habits can be just ritualistic things we do when we get up in the morning. Do you get up in the morning, go pee, brush your teeth, then have coffee? Do you do that same thing every single day? Certain times habits keep us locked in in a certain aspect of ourselves that restricts our own change. And when the body, knowing this, the essence, the spirit, the will, understands that everything in this universe is constantly changing and evolving as I am in the universe and so are you, so I guess we're part of that everything, so that we're always in a constant state of flux. When I set myself in a habit, I am not leaving any room for growth or change. I am locking myself into a particular place and time. I am locking myself into a particular notion. I am saying again that what was good then will be good now, will be good tomorrow, will be good Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and it's just simple untruth. It's just a simple untruth that will lock us in place and prevent us from moving forward. Now, this is about discovery. This is always about discovery. We did a meditation today, and we're going to be talking about judgments in a little bit because judgments and habits really tie in together, where I simply invited you to, to listen to your higher self, your higher wisdom, whatever you would like to term it, and gently bring online all the judgments within our body, good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes a judgment can be good. Oh, I like their hair. That's a judgment. Or their hair is a mess. It's still a judgment. It doesn't matter. It's about understanding that judgments lock us in a place of how we think other people should show up, how we think we should show up. And as talked about in a little bit ago when I just read that, so many times the big, one of the biggest habits that we have in our body is listening to other people tell us how to be us. And that is just illogical. And I'm not one for really 
wanting to go in logic a lot, but if you want to look at the logic of metaphysics, and if this is the way it works, then it's only logical that I apply the systems of natural law and natural understanding of who I am in my essence. We talked a little bit last week how the spirit and the will sort of got discombobulated with each other because they forgot when they came into the body that they were together on this journey. And the spirit and the will have always been trying to work together for our all, all of our highest goods so that we can achieve or do whatever it is that we want to do in this world. The free will concept is saying, if you have a notion in your body, do it. Now, if the notion is coming to go and slap someone, that's not your free will. That is something within you that's been denied. And we're going to talk about emotional release in a moment. But your free will is coming from a place of es your essence is pure. Your essence is still of love. Our bodies are wonder, this wonderful universe was still all created from a place of love. So were you, so was I. So if I'm wanting to do something that may be ill to somebody, I've got to go inside and realize that that's not coming from my free will because my will is only going to want to do what is loving and what my essence wants it to do, what's in congruence with my essence. So as we move forward, we're going to look into judgments. And judgments make judgment making stops the situation from changing. A judgment sets you up to repeat situations until understanding is gained. A judgment says something is such and such. The label impedes change and the more it's repeated, the more it conditions you. So habits, judgment, and conditioning all kind of walk, work hand in hand. Because if I keep thinking that this situation is what it is because it was something that I discovered or, or went through long ago, I'm going to be conditioned and I'm going to have a conditioned emotional response. So as we go through all these things, we may have had a notion or a judgment in our body that water is frightening. And the truth is, I drowned almost when I was a little kid and I was afraid. That notion or that conditioning is just the simple, we haven't released the fear yet. We're still stuck in the fear of that and it becomes a judgment and a condition in us. It's like now we're in our full bodies, we know how to swim, we're, our muscles are growing. Whatever the conditions were that day that made you almost drown has set us up for a whole lifetime of believing that water is frightening. And that's just one simple example. How many times have we run into these kind of things with our interactions with people? It's like, well, if I say this, they're just going to react that way. Because somewhere along the line, you said something, you spoke a truth a long time ago to someone, and they reacted a certain way. It's, it's a condition that runs our own lives. It's something that we get pro so programmed into that we want to be free. We think we're in a free country. We say we're in a free country but we're still masking ourselves in the illusion of freedom because the illusion of freedom is happening right here or the illusion of imprisonment is happening right here. Release of judgment necessary for the spirit and the will on, uh, are unable to, release of judgment is necessary for the spirit and will because they are unable to be free in an energy field clouded with judgment. So if we're all energy and in most new thought metaphysical communities, people are under the understanding and awakening to the fact that we are all energy. So if I'm simply an energy field, it helps me also release that judgment of going, well, this is just simply about energy here. And if I want to be judgment free, I mean, if I want to have experienced my free will and I'm stuck in judgment, that's going to cloud my own energy field. It's almost like putting ink in the water. Would you want to drink a glass of water after I just dropped ink in it? It's pure water. It was filtered. Nobody wants to do that. Those are the things that judgment does. It clouds our own aura. Release of judgment, I said that already. It is saying that the next experience is going to be the same as last. Every time I have a judgment about what's going to go on, I am saying in my mind that every single thing that's going to happen is going to repeat. It's just going to be the same thing over and over again. So as we look at all these different things, we have to go inside ourselves and really, really, really do the work of understanding what is going on within us. Again, this is always about discovery and understanding. When we did this meditation today, I, I, I always invite us to just do it from a place of discovery, never from a place of flogging ourselves. There's so many reasons in this lifetime for us to have flogged ourselves, and there's never been a good reason for us to have flogged ourselves. 
but we do it constantly and every time oh there I go I judged again it's like breathe that is a moment of awareness a, a, a moment of awareness it's a moment of discovery I've used the example before seven seven moments of blunder or seven moments of wonder every time I have an awareness it's not a moment of blunder it's in a moment of wonder we have judged ourselves to be in a moment of blunder because maybe I was ill to that person or I said the wrong thing or I, or I thought, well, she's just going to show up the same way. She's probably not going to like this. That's, if, if I can go back to, to myself and just simply be aware of what's going on in me, <sighs> I can just simply breathe into it and let it go and understand that this is part of my programming. This is part of the conditioning that I've grown up with. This is part of social conditioning. You know, the earth... Mankind, womankind, humankind have been around for a long time now. But really just a blink of, eye, blink of an eye when we look at the cosmic timeline of this. But since we've set up here, we've all fallen under the illusion of being separate from spirit. And in that separateness from spirit, we forgot who we were. And in that forgetting who we were, I listened to you to tell me who I was. And when other people started realizing it, they're like, oh, well, cool. If they're going to listen to me to tell them who they are, I'm going to tell you you're a slave and you need to serve me. Or I'm going to tell you you're this or that. And then we lose our identity. We lose our own choice. We lose our own ability to use our free will. And the will is constantly in there telling us, guiding us all the time. One of the keys to stop judging is to feel them to their fullest. Your feelings will tell you when you're judging. So many times we're afraid to feel our feelings. That was back to last week with all the denial. It's like if I'm denying what I'm feeling, I don't have to tell you yet. This isn't about expression yet. We'll do that in a second. But if I'm just afraid to feel it, I'm in denial. And my judgment is going to be clouding me. I'm going to be stuck in it. But if I'm willing to feel the judgment and just own it 100%, I judge people who wear, well, gosh, purple and green, white, blue shirts. I know, trying to not pick a shirt that somebody was actually wearing. <laughs> so I'm like, and, and use ridiculous scenarios sometimes because we know in our bodies that judgments really become heavier than that. But they become as simple as that too. It's like if, if I'm sitting there judging you for how you show up, I'm the one who's being judged here. Emotions empower judgments. They, they influence you to see situations or persons, or persons or people according to your judgment. So, this is a very interesting dynamic because the, of the energy in the universe. The, life is, it's your movie. This is my movie. That's your movie. We're all in a movie together. So as we're doing things, if I have a scenario in me that says, Sally is going to show up this way. She's always mean and rude to me. But yet, all of other Sally's friends go, well, Sally's one of the sweetest people I've ever met. But say I had an interaction with Sally one day, and I saw her maybe off-center. She was hungry, angry, lonely, tired, halt, a place where she needed to stop and take care of herself. And she was a little snip, snippy with me. Well, that was my experience of her. And I'm like, well, Sally, she's kind of rude. And then I walk away with that judgment in my body. Now, the more I feel that judgment, the more I am rippling that energy out towards Sally. And it's almost as if I lock her into a position of never being anything else with me. So that all her other friends or the new people that meet her go, what do you mean? Sally is so sweet. I've never seen a sweeter person. But in my experience, because I locked her into that energetic judgment, when she shows up in me, it's almost as if she has no other choice but to be rude to me. Or snip it. Or snippy. Not a snip it. I don't know how that is. Understanding how we affect each other in our judgments if, if you think I'm always going to show up with a smile on my face, that's a judgment. What if I have a frown one day? I've had frowns many days. I'm a human being. So if we are going to judge each other and hold them into that place, what you're also saying is, I'm not going to let you be you. You're going to be my version of you in my world. Well, that's what we're doing with each other when we have judgment, and their emotions empower that. So if I'm really mad at Sally for being rude with me that day, boy, I just amped up that ripple that I'm sending out to her whenever she shows up in my world, and she may be in a good mood, and then she's going to come and go, there's Mark. <laughs> and they're like, Sally, what, what happened? She's I don't know, just that guy. It's because I'm rippling nothing but my judgment out to her of how she was going to show up at me. 
Sometimes judgments are so layered in all the different aspects of ourselves that they guise themselves as fact. Well, this is what is. Is it? If the universe is constantly in flux and changing, and all the energy and all the wonder of all that is, whether you want to call it magic, whether you want to call it energy, whether you want to call it law, whether you want to call it a thing is what it is. If I think it one way and only think it that way, that's how it's going to show up in my life. This is a create your own reality universe. So if I'm stuck in judgment, what reality am I going to create? I'm going to create one that's full of judgment. And if I'm going to say now that these judgments are now facts, well then you have to all abide by these facts now. And this is where control of society comes in. True understanding then will replace judgment and habitual response and allow expression that gives release to everything within yourself that you have imprisoned. This next piece I'm going to read is, is a channeled piece from an undisclosed transcendental author. And it starts out like this. We come to speak of judgment. Cast out the judgments from your heart. For as you judge one another, do you judge yourself tenfold. Look not on the trail of your happenings. Look not on the mistakes of your past, for never will you see with whom you are traveling. A person will travel far and wide in their lifetime. Look not at where they have been, but where they are in that moment, for that is who they are. Bring halt to looking at the color of their skin, or whether the curves of their body bring pleasure to your senses. Look but only in their eyes and heart, for that is where you will find yourself, and that is where you will find us. Bring back the love from which you have come. Seek truth instead of deception, for in your journey you are more willing to be and live in the illusion than in the truth. The truth being that you will become lost in your judgments, lost in a carousel of fear and frustration which will always lead to judgment. These judgments bind your heart and soul, keeping you and yours prisoners of your own doubt. Be here now and see with the eyes of your home. Stay with your hearts, be with your love, hold close to your heart the memories of your being. Good journey. As I read this and was reading these words, there's this particular line that stood out for me. And uh, it says, seek truth instead of deception, for in your journey you're more willing to be and live in the illusion. And I kept reading, be and live in the illusion, be and live in the illusion, and, it, and I saw believe believed in the illusion and it's so many times we we do that we're more willing to believe in the illusion than in the truth and the truth of our essence is we came in clean our spirits came in clean we've talked about the different programmings that we in in handbook to higher consciousness and when i did that part on living love with children and how so much of where we're at and we're vibrating really does affect how they are because if i'm vibrating in a place in a worry place that maybe my kid's not going to be able to, I don't know, learn how to ride a skateboard. We'll just think of anything. When she goes or he goes to ride that skateboard, it's not that I said these things to them, but if I'm rippling out this energy, they're in my, real, my reality. They're going to feel the energy and then their body is going to program itself by virtue of what input is coming at them. This is why we really do affect the one to five growth patterns in a kid. How we as parents, grandparents, cousins, uncles, moms, dads, whatever, really are affecting. Now once they have their psyche development and all these wonderful judgments online that started coming out about, well, I can't ride a skateboard, I'm not coordinated, I might get hurt, da 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 da. Then they have their own opportunity to free their will as well once we give them the instruction about this but say we were just blind in it and we just didn't know we have more understanding and more more influence on what's going on in our children than we ever thought now this is another quote by billy Connolly on judgment and this is just for a little levity before you judge a man walk a mile in his shoes after that who cares he's a mile away and you have his shoes <laughs> just to have a little fun I've seen a lot of different quotes on judgment, and that one really stuck out. Because it's so funny, and it's kind of true, too. Because last, last week we talked about acceptance. And in that lesson, it's like, 
I don't have to accept you. I want to in my heart because I'm a loving person, but the only person, the only being, the only thing I really need to accept is me. Because as I have true acceptance of me, I'm going to have that vibration within me clean. I'm going to have all those judgments free. I'm going to know what's going on in my own body to the point that I'm going to create acceptable things coming at me. And then, and then we talked about last week that I'd just be able to receive you. We're always wanting a higher understanding. We have, in this community, most people live in a place of love. And we're always sowing the seeds of love. But when we're in a society the way we are, we see politicians, we see greed, we see corporations that are going over the top and taking money from people for products that we know are made for pennies on the dollar because they make them in, over in countries where they're really controlling the people. Whew. We have to breathe into all this because it's another place for us to get stuck in our judgments. We have to understand that we're all in this together. And as I raise my vibration and you raise your vibration and all of us each individually can come to that understanding and raise our vibrations, we're going to ripple that out and we're going to heal one by one. So sowing the seeds of love is very important and we always plant them here first. We have to start at home. I have to, I have to feed this heart before I can feed yours. If this heart is empty, when I show up, I'm not the loving guy that you wanted me to be in the first place, whether it was a judgment or just a simple preference to see Mark loving. We all have compassion for each other, so it's, it's evident that we would want to see each other in joy. But what if the moment holds for you that grief is where you needed to be? What if the moment held for you that anger is what you needed to be because that's what you were feeling and you've been denying it in your own world. You've been denying it in your own life. You've been denying it in your own experience to the point that you've stuffed it down so much you're a prisoner in your own, your own body, in your own spirit. Has anybody ever felt that, that they just wanted to break free? That they felt imprisoned? We were. We are. And we have the keys to do it. And the keys to do this is simple acceptance, simple understanding, simple allowance to be who we are. As we go into the emotional release part, for this perspective, the way she defines it is emotional release means that the emotions become free to respond to any given situation with what the situation actually calls for. When emotions experienced in situation that have been not given, that have not been given an expression, they do not go away. They only subside in weight. So I'm going to say that again. When emotions have been experienced in relation to a situation but have not been given complete expression, they do not go away. They only subside in weight. They cannot be dismissed for they have a consciousness of their own, nor do they respond to the mind telling them how they should feel. So this is a place of breathing into this and going, well, if I didn't express this, I can't kid myself into thinking it's going away because it's just going to show up in another way, shame or form, shape or form. So when another situation comes up that reminds the emotions of where they've been denied, they feel they cannot respond freely to a situation. Our emotional response will be colored by the denial the emotions received in the previous situation. So that means if if there was a time that something happened in my life, and like especially as kids, because this is where most of the programming comes in our lives, it is, uh, don't cry, men don't cry, boys don't cry. So you got that thing inside of you that was a denied emotional expression. So then something else comes up in your life later on, and the body's triggering an emotion, but we got that Im immediate judgment, immediate programming, that immediate conditioning that says, no. We were not allowed to express in this situation. I am not allowed to express now in this situation, and I'm still stuck. And, and if the emotions are empowering my judgments, well then what judgments are gonna come up now? I'm gonna start being more and more judgmental because really the judgments that are inside me are simply the denials of my own expression of emotion and all the different things that were going on in this person or that person or that person that simply were unexpressed. This sets up us to only express what's easy. That puts a charge on the emotional body and it must be released to be able to respond to whatever the present situation is. So that means I'm always like, <clears throat> how are you feeling, honey? I have a little headache. And that was an easy one. So we're allowed to say, I have a headache. That's an easy one to say to people. Or, I love you. 
Sometimes we're going to be stuck in what's only easiest for us to express. If it was harder for me to express my anger, I'm going to be stuck in anger. If it was harder for me to express my love, I'm going to be stuck in love. We've talked about this before in, in some of the premises of the, the workshop that we do, the workshop that we brought from our friend Art, Men Art, Art Sellers that mentored us into this, that the only negative emotion is the one unexpressed. Because so many times his society has said anger is a negative emotion. No, it isn't. Violence is negative. But anger is simply emotion. What this is suggesting is that you feel it all. You let yourself feel it. You allow yourself to feel it. Because if you don't, you're going to have a charge now on that, that particular thing. So if that situation comes up, it's going to come up in your body whether you express it or not. And this is where we talked about last week where disease, maladies, death and aging comes from because in our spiritual light bodies and even in science again there's nothing in our DNA to age or to die this is a condition that has been believed that we must have some kind of death to exit this world and as we go into these emotional releases more what we're going to find is that we're going to attune our bodies more and more we're going to be able to release these emotions and then have that vibration just transcend us out when we choose to go now whether i get that this lifetime or you get that this lifetime or who whatever of us humans get that this lifetime we have to understand that we're also walking on a journey that the idea is to move forward in this journey i can let and we we just sang the song, I can't live my life facing backwards. It's like, this is part of it. If I can look back for a moment, just for a moment of understanding, so I can bring forth to where I am now. Because nothing in the past is haunting me. I'm only being haunted, if I'm being haunted, by what's going on right now. But it may have been all the demo emotions and denials and acceptances that I haven't dealt with in the past, but he still dealt and led me right here to right here and now. And in the right here and now, I always have an opportunity to express. So again, it's not about trying to calm yourself or telling your mind, letting the mind tell you how you should feel. There's, these things work together in certain aspects, but this has no business telling this how to feel. Just like this has no business telling this how to add. Let the mind do the math and let this do the feeling. But our mind will allow us to understand some of the judgments and some of the emotions that have been blocked and been denied in our own bodies. If you're feeling rage, it must be expressed, not calmed, or it will resurface. When someone is, is enraged and someone says, calm down, all you're doing is stuffing it back in that person and making them going to resurface at another time. And usually it's the most inappropriate time, too. We have to just breathe into this one. So much of this society has been controlled by government saying to you, hey, there's a law against getting too loud. So I'm going to stifle, stifle, and stifle. Remember, that some of these things are set up on purpose because some people want to control other people. Not every person walking the planet right now has the understanding. As a light body and as a light being is, and our souls, we're all one, it's all good, we're all going to go home, and we're all going to go back to the light. But in this moment, some people have a little bit more understanding than others. Breathe into it. Watch where you get in judgment of it. And just allow yourself to express what you need to express. If I'm going to tell Becky, well, she needs to express her anger, it's none of my business. I may, as a friend, assist her if she asks me for assistance in expressing her anger, but I have no business telling her how to feel at all, way, shape, or form. If she needs to express it, she needs to express it. Everybody's got a vibrational difference. Everybody's on their own journey. Some people aren't going to get it this lifetime, and it's okay. We have judged people as, well, they're just not with it. How do we know what they're with? You know, back to the, I made a joke with the Billy Connolly thing, but, you know, don't judge a man unless you walk a mile in his shoes. It's like, we don't know what's right for you. Everybody's on an individual soul walk. We're on a different journey. We're on the same journey together, but we're expressing it differently. So if I'm going to express my markness, and in my, my markness and all the things that I set up for my own discovery, I'm going to show up one day like this or that, that's for me. Not for you. Something that I give to you will be for you. But my discovery is going to be for me. Now, I will share because I'm a sharer. That's what I do. I have big lips and I like to talk. And I will share 
my heart with people because that's kind of what my mission is here to always share these feelings, to always share the discoveries that I have found, to share the different keys that I can find out in the world. But the journey is an inward journey. It's always an inward journey. Where did I go? The idea here is to express what your body is urging you to express. Surrender to the expression and let nature take its course. This is back to denial and what is. Nature, natural, nature, all the same word, it's natural for us to express. Our body knows what to express. It's our mind that says stop. Our body is urging us. We know when we're sad. If you feel like crying, do you let yourself cry? Or do you stuff it? Sometimes. So we do a little bit of both. I invite us to all to let ourselves express. Now sometimes we think, and I always use Becky as an example because she's always right there. But so what if I'm going through something, but Becky has never heard of metaphysics, never heard of new thought, never heard of owning emotions, and, and, and I'm upset with her. Well, have you ever heard that line, cast not your pearl among swines? It had nothing to do with judgment. It's, it's about knowing when the person is ripe to receive what you're saying. So if she's never heard of a concept that I'm talking about and I choose to just get it all out, it, it may not be received. I still have to express, but not always to the person that may have stepped on my toe or hurt my feelings or judged me. I just need to get it out. So sometimes we've been misunderstood. Oh, I got to tell this person. No, you don't. You just got to get it out. Maybe you can go tell a friend. Maybe I'm mad at Sally and I can go to Becky and go, man, Sally really upset me. I'm really processing this. I really want to work on it. I want to get this out so I can be free. And Becky will be that sounding board for me to help me in my own clarity, my understanding. Because she is in that attunement with me. She is in that place of understanding. She might point something out that will spark something within me that gives me greater understanding. So she didn't do the work for me, but as my friend and as friends, we can assist each other on our journey. But again, you're still doing the work. It's your own free will that is choosing to express, that is choosing to reach out to somebody and say, will you please help me in processing Sally? And she says, sure, what, what happened? And we'll go over the dialogue and she maybe have her own intuit and wisdoms that come online. And she can go this, that, or the other. And I go, oh, it's this. Thank you. And I take that in and I do that process. I did it. She was my helper in that moment. There may be another moment where I help Becky or Sally or Joe or Sue. It's just about discovery and understanding and always remembering that it's coming from a place of here. It's still coming from a place of love. We still want understanding. Mark Twain, again, I'm going to say this for the rest of my life. The first love and last love must always be self-love. It's a very powerful thing to be able to go inside and love yourself for everything. We did something in the handbook to higher consciousness where they had a little mantra, always us living love. And as we look in that, we have to look at the, we're part of the us. You know, we are part of the us. I am part of the we. So I got to be able to look in here and love me first, always, so that I can always look at you from a place of loving. Own and release all that would be denied. As we continue this walk, this is what we're learning. This is one of the valuable keys to us. To own and release all that would be denied in our being. Just breathe into it. It sounds so foreign sometimes. It sounds like it's so hard to do. But sometimes I think the hardness becomes because we, the fear that has blocked us and all the conditioning of uh, boys don't cry, women aren't supposed to get angry because they'll be labeled the word I don't like to say. Yeah, I don't like that word. It brings emotion to me because it's labeled and conditioned women to be able, unable to express their anger and their rage, and in that has caused so many of our sisters to become victims and hurt, so, which is another drill. But that's where it moves me and my body. Just one simple word has done so much damage to my sisters. So that's a tangent, but let me breathe into that for a moment. These are part of the conditionings. How many, how many men have gone grown up to be violent because they weren't allowed to cry? It's like there are good souls in there. There are good hearts in there. They're just so full of rage that it just started permeating out of their being, and, and they lost their free will. 
and then all those emotional addictions just took over. As we continue to own, accept, release our judgments, true expression, everything our body urges to express, we're going to continue to sow those seeds of love. You and I, one by one, group by group, nation by nation, as we do this work, we're all going to be able to understand and finally, truly use our right use of will. Thank you. Homotakwe Shook up the views of the common man The love train rides from coast to coast DJs the men we love the most Could you be, could you be, squeak it clean And smash any hope of democracy Is the headline says you're free to choose There's egg on your face and mud on your shoes One of these days you're gonna call it the blues Yeah, yes Anything is possible in their eyes, they look to the skies for some kind of divine intervention. Food goes to waste, so nice to eat, so nice to taste. Politician granny with your high deals, have you no idea how the majority feels so by far in a promised land, we're fools to the rules of a government plan. Kick out the star, bring back the jay. If you're a worried man, shout about it. Open hearts, feel about it. Open minds, think about it. Everyone, read about it. Everyone, scream about it. Everyone, everyone, yeah. everyone, everyone, read about it, read about it, read in the books and the crannies and nooks, there are books to read, time to read all your words, swallow your pride, open your Shook up the views of the common man in the love train Rise from coast to coast Every minute, every hour I love her, sunflower 